All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart for the podcast here talking about Auburn football. Go ahead and like this video, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead and click the bell twice so you don't miss any information. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Now, this is kind of a casual Friday. We're just going to talk about a few things as it relates to Auburn football and this potential, this particular 2020 football schedule. Now, a lot of people are still on the fence about how to predict or project how this particular schedule is going to go. Some folks say seven and six just to play it safe. Now, let me tell you about the seven and six people. Most of those people will project the seven and six record. But then midseason, once Auburn beats North Carolina and they might steal one from Georgia and Athens, now all of a sudden they forget all about the seven and six that they projected. As a matter of fact, late kick kind of hit on this, but he's absolutely right. There's a good portion of Auburn fans that will say, all right, let me just play it safe. I don't trust Gus. Let's go on and pick eight and five. And then when Auburn goes to Arlington in the Avercare Classic and knocks off Oregon and goes into Florida as a top five team, now all of a sudden the expectations change. You can't show favoritism. If you think Auburn is going to go seven and six or eight and four, don't be that fan in the middle of the season with all of these expectations post facto. Once you start to say, well, hey, maybe Auburn could go undefeated. Maybe Auburn could win the SEC championship. Then they wind up going, say, 10 and two. And now you're mad because Auburn drops the SEC championship to a team like Florida. Or in a rematch like Georgia, you got to keep your you got to keep your projections in the road. Last year, when we talked about Auburn football, I thought you know at best nine and three, you know something like that because it's a tough schedule. Tough schedule got a fresh true freshman quarterback, um, got a lot of uncertainties on both sides of the football field. Turns out Auburn goes nine and four, actually beating Alabama this year. But here's an X factor in this particular year that I'm really concerned about. I'm really concerned about these Mississippi schools. They just made some really, really huge upgrades as far as coaching staff goes. And when I talk about this, I'm thinking about Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach out of uh, Mike Leach from Washington State. Lane Kiffin, definitely a familiar piece to the SEC puzzle, did some stints at Tennessee, also at Alabama. So he's very familiar especially with the culture of the SEC West and what it takes to win because he's done so at a very high level. As a matter of fact, I would actually credit Alabama's current level of offense to a lot of his influence um, at Alabama. Alabama is not that power uh, team that's going to beat you 21-7, to although it feels like they're beating you 42-7. to Now they're going to actually beat you 42-7 to and still have a pretty decent defense to go with it. Nick Saban definitely made the adjustments. He realized, hey, this this power football that we're playing, we're not going to be able to keep up with some of the teams. I think one of the pivotal, most pivotal games that let Nick Saban know this was the Auburn game in 2014. He realized, hey, I'm going to have to have some firepower to be able to combat this type of offense, and they haven't been the same since couple of national championships later, here we are with Alabama, but their former offensive coordinator, Lane Kiffin, now the head coach at Ole Miss. I think this is going to have a lot of impact recruiting-wise, and it's going to have a lot of impact as to far as, far as the uh, competitiveness of the SEC West. I think the SEC West was already ultra-competitive as it was. Arkansas, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State have kind of fallen by the wayside in the past few years, but With these coaching upgrades, and then you talk about Sam Pittman at Arkansas, I mean, I think these upgrades are going to really, down the stretch, really make the SEC West a lot more competitive. And I think that will kind of put a different spin on where we think Auburn is going to be as far as the 2020 season. Because at first, it looked like, hey, this is an opportunity uh, for Auburn to, you know, have a somewhat of a guaranteed 10-2 season, uh, upgraded roster, Although you lose Marlon Davidson and Derrick Brown, I mean, you can't replace those kind of guys anyway. 
but still got a level of talent that at least can be highly competitive in the SEC considering the schedule. You don't have Florida this year as your alternate SEC East team. You got Kentucky this year, which is obviously a very winnable game. George is always going to be a tough one, but those Mississippi schools kind of, you know, those are on my radar right now as teams that I think Auburn could possibly have some issues with. Now, of course, I think Auburn will have the more superior roster, but these are the types of games that because of the neutrality of mistakes and turnovers, Auburn winds up struggling in games like this sometimes, and it winds up coming down um, to the wire versus where there are situations where you can actually out-talent the team. I don't know if Auburn has enough talent to win off of talent alone, even if they make every mistake possible. And see, that's where recruiting gets you, where you make every mistake possible and you still win the game by two or three touchdowns. Alabama has done that in the past. Georgia's actually trying to get to that state of being as a program, but Auburn obviously with the inconsistencies of recruiting classes. I mean, yeah, you got a couple of top tens here and there, but when you look at the meat, most of those top tens have been driven by one recruit, a five-star recruit, and that makes that kind of inflates the class to be a little bit more than what it turns out to be. Which is why situation a lot of Auburn fans don't want to admit this, but that's why you get into the SEC championship game and you lose one running back and you're back to square one. You go from possibly being the first two loss team in the college football playoff era to make it to the college football playoff with two losses to you lose your star running back or your star running back is hampered and now you're deficient. And that goes back to recruiting. Nobody wants to talk on that, but that is the real talk as it, as it relates to Auburn football. It should never be a situation where if you're a true contender to where running one running back loss puts you in a bind, it, it, especially in an offensive bind as serious as 2017. Because I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you get a he- healthy carry on Johnson in the SEC championship, Auburn's the first two-loss team in the college football playoff period. Almost got it done with even with him with half a shoulder, his shoulder hanging off his off of him. But I think this is going to be really interesting to see how the coaching upgrades with Mississippi State and Ole Miss impacts the SEC West. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger or Eagle.